Hello viewers, here is an Epson's printer. This is a Stylus Color 3000. Very large, very heavy machine. It's probably a good three feet wide or so. This was being discarded, although it was set out relatively neatly with some other decent items. And it also had Seemingly a complete set of all the cables needed to cook it up. So I tend to think this probably works. And I suspect I'll be able to get it to mechanically work again. But what I'm not too certain about is getting it to actually print something because this is an ink based printer and I'm sure the cartilages are long, long out of production. And even if you find one that's, you know, new old stock or something like that, it's probably spoiled. So, unfortunately we may never see this print. But who knows? Maybe, it, maybe uh, we'll be able to. I'm not sure where the cartilages would normally reside. I don't really know much of anything about this kind of printer. Maybe these are the cartilages in here. Of course, there's the standard yellow, Margaret, Cannon, and black. And these are from, this one's from 2012. So, while well, even though that was a very long time ago, I wonder if uh, maybe these are still in production, you know, relatively recently. Seiko Epson Corporation, made in the Japan. I mean, these tend to spoil with time, so even though it's not made in China, I still have my doubts. These are from 2004, so I really have my doubts about those. It's kind of heavy, so maybe it, maybe it still has uh, some ink in there. If it's still fluid or not, that's to be determined. That one's empty. It doesn't feel like there's anything in there. It's kind of not going in quite as easily as I'd like them to. That one also feels empty. Oh, the black one definitely has something in there. You know, yeah, I don't know if it's dried out, but there's something there. A little bit of leakage, maybe, at some point. At least we got the model number there, so I can try to search that. Maybe those cartilages can be refilled, I'm not sure. I don't know what kind of paper this would take. It's certainly bigger than a standard 8.5 by 11 sheet. I imagine this would have been an extremely expensive piece of equipment back in the day. Cannon, Margaret, yellow, black. It's like the paper feed. I don't know what, I don't know what that does. It sounds like it's making some kind of physical adjustment in there. That's definitely making a physical adjustment in there. Ribbon cables that go on the head. Of course, it's heavily yellowed. Put this back onto the tripods here and I'm going to plug it in too because this camera is almost out of charge. Ah, and there goes the telephone again. That's good to know. What I would like to do is tell you a little about the solar program. The benefits, tax rebates, and grants from the government. It typically means going solar is absolutely free for most people. I understand you are the homeowner of a single-family regular house, right? I use incandescent light bulbs. Let's see if I can find any more information on here. Here's some more here.
made in the Japan, so it probably still works. I thought this was maybe a product of the 90s, but if those cartilages are original, then maybe it's not quite that old. It has a serial port, and it came with these pretty neat Radio Shack cables. An old Radio Shack logo on there. And it came with a Falcon data switch. So I don't know if this was maybe hooked up to two different computers or what. That's not the cable that goes, that's the end that goes in the computer. And then this is the printer cable. Oh! Look at that, this goes to a USB. I thought I was going to have to use an archaic computer to test this out, but looks like we won't have to do that. Somewhere on here, in the other end of this, is probably the... This is the cord that would have gone on here. And then this cord... That also goes on here. So maybe there was two of these printers at some point. I don't know. Anyways, there's all this. So we definitely have what we need to hook up to the computer. Drivers, who knows. Probably can grab one somewhere. If not, use a generic one. Ah, this takes a, this needs a power input, I don't have that, but I don't really need that, that switch. And it's not for this purpose, I'll definitely keep it. Um, maybe this is the paper adjustment, I guess this is probably 8.5 by 11 piece. And here's the power cord, it's the permanently attached kind. It also has... Another port there. Looks like a PS2, but I don't think that's what it is. Let's get a different arrangement of pins. Anyway, so let's plug this up and see if this does anything. I'm not going to attempt to use it uh, in this video or even probably even this month. A lot of other projects I got to do. But let's see if it even works. I'll plug this in. No explosion yet, so that's always good. No capacitors blowing up or anything. Now let's turn it on. Okay, seems like it works. It seems like it's initialized. Let's clean the heads. I don't know if that's working or not. This doesn't seem to be responding to any 
commands, or maybe it's just delayed. Ah, there we go. Maybe it was still initialized. Now we have paper out. Maybe it wants a piece of paper for the cleaning. I'll go get some paper. Got a paper. I think that the paper would go in here. I'll adjust that to size. Let's try it again. where the paper goes. Oh, I didn't push it down all the way. I know I said I wasn't going to try to make a print, but now that I see it's only a USB, I don't have to drag out with serial ports. That wasn't too good. I'll see if it'll print. You know, maybe the wonders of plug and play will do something for us here. I have my doubts, but I'll spend a few minutes to try. USB connector, which is now somehow just by sitting here thoroughly entangled itself in every single cord on the table. Okay, that's plugged in. Actually, I'll wait to plug that in until this initializes. And certainly never seen that one before. To not much of any surprise, it didn't work. So that's that. I'll try again another day with a machine that has a serial port because on the Espen's website they seem to suggest that the drivers for this should exist within Windows and I suspect the reason it wasn't working was because the USB contraption maybe needs a different driver or something and perhaps if the Windows 7 was interfacing with the machine directly through the serial port it would pick up the drivers. So we'll try that another time. But regardless, this seems like it should work. I also noticed that there seem to be some cartilages available for this. Still under manufacture. So I think there is a much better chance in getting this to print again than I originally thought. <laughs>